Todd Johnson is not just a millionaire. He's built multiple businesses across industries into seven figures and beyond, giving him a nickname of TJ, the millionaire mentor. The fastest way to become a millionaire is help a lot of people. When people say passive income, they almost think about not doing anything at all. Man, this thing's a beast, TJ. The bar isn't as high as people think to become successful in business. Do you want to know how he builds his business every day and how you can follow in his footsteps? Well, keep watching to find out more. We're surrounded by incredible exotic cars. I can't wait to meet TJ, the millionaire mentor, his beautiful crib. Let's go check it out. I bet he's waiting for us inside. I'm just going to go and walk right in. I'm sure he's here. Hey, what's CJ, up, CJ, good to meet you, man. Good to meet you too, buddy. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Let's dive too. straight into it. Yeah. That is breathtaking. <laughs> Thank you. This is Thank your you. place? Yep, yeah, this is my place, so welcome. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. For those that don't know you, yeah. give us a little bit of a background into your story and when you went from employee mm -hmm. to entrepreneur. Hey, I came from South Carolina, Columbia, South, South Carolina, Carolina okay. right? Sort of a poor background. So being an entrepreneur, being ambitious was something that just came naturally because I wanted to get out of the environment that I was in, right? So I was delivering newspapers, cutting grass, doing all those sorts of things just to make money so that I can have extra food, right? So the entrepreneurial uh, spirit has always been there. Being ambitious has always been there. But I went in the military at 17. What branch? And uh, the Air Force. Went in the Air Force at 17. Thank you, thank you. Went in the Air Force at 17 was in the Air Force for like six years, went to school while I was in the Air Force, studied computer science, started doing every job I could while I was in the military to get experience. And then when I got out of the military, I wanted to get a job. I determined how much money I wanted to make by how much the highest paid military person made. Mm -hmm. So when that I got out, standard. yeah, when I got out, I asked for that amount and everybody laughed at me. And so what I did is I said, well, what would it take to make that amount? And they would tell me and I would write it all down and I would try to build that skill set and that experience to go out and get that amount of money. So that's how I got my first job out of the military. Did that, got a consulting job, working for a consulting company and left that company and started my uh, first real business. That's awesome, very inspiring. You guys keep watching because you'll hear more from TJ about the millionaire mindset, about the skill sets that you need to really make it to this level. You've got a beautiful place. Give us a quick snippet of where we are. And man, I can't wait to see your car collection. I share that passion with you, TJ, <laughs> like 110%. Awesome. So That's I can't awesome. wait to see and show our audience as well. Yeah, perfect, yeah. So, so I call this a humble manner because when I look out, I'm looking out and I see Ashton Kutcher's house. Then there's Justin Bieber's house that's being built. And then there's Mark Wahlberg's house. Mark, I love Mark, yeah. To this. And you're in the oh, right yeah. spot. Which goes, yeah, yeah, so it's humbling, right? It just keeps you humble because you see it and you go, wow. There's always things to achieve and you realize how blessed you are to be here. Absolutely. But there's a lot more that we can do. Yeah, this is, this is not your ceiling. Yeah. Right, you gotta break through the next one and the next one. Yeah. Building yeah. a business to seven figures. Yeah. Like, what would you recommend one entrepreneur focus on? Maybe he's just getting started. Just getting started, I yeah. think. I like marketing. Marketing, I okay. like marketing because there's all levels, there's so many different skill sets and so many different um, nuances in marketing. There's ad buying, there's copywriting, there's email list building, there's you know uh, graphics, there's mm -hmm. all types of stuff that you can do right now. Streaming is huge, right? And, and there's all this new technology that people have to understand, right? So marketing is always changing, it's always growing. And so it's something that you can dive into, get really, really good at, and then offer that services so it's really easy. It seems like a lot of people are doing marketing. Yeah. Don't you think it's a little oversaturated or yeah. you can always do something better than somebody else? No, it's not even about better than someone else all the time. I mean, when you think about it, like how many water companies are there, right? So you'd be like, if I came here, I got this idea. I want to start this water brand. Let's get out of here. You're crazy, well, right? Because it's crazy. already a saturated market. You're crazy. And so the example I use all the time is there's a brand called Hint. So the whole idea is there's a hint of flavor. Hmm. So there's always been water brands, right? So there's water brands with a lot of flavor, there's bubbly water, there's you know sparkling water, whatever, right? There's all types of water. But Hint came in and they're killing it, right? Like if you look at their valuation and you look at all that stuff, they're just absolutely killing it. But they've only been on the scene for the last you know few years. But you would have said that it's, be crazy it's, to get it's, it's saturated. But they have a position, mm -hmm. right? We're only gonna have a hint of flavor. They had cool branding, right? And if you can market water today, 
than what is saturated. How does having a clear vision uh, achieve or help you achieve the level of success? I mean, that's it, right? That's, is that it? that's everything. It's important because it's like, you know, no matter what you're doing, if you're driving cars, mm -hmm. your vision is like one of the most important things. How well you see. Mm -hmm. If you're boxing, you're fighting. How well you see gives you a huge advantage, right? So how well you see where you're trying to go informs your activity. So Top based over. on how well you see, right, how clearly you can see things, yeah. you can then so. go, you know, I know exactly where I'm going, what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, right? Mm -hmm. And typically you can see things better than other people or sooner than other people. So with that, you have a lot of confidence in how you move. You know, I see what I see. You might not be able to see it, but I know if I go off and, you know, buy this car as an example. That could be a distraction. Because I know, well, it could be a distraction, but it could also be, you know, um, I think Jay Leno said, man, it was his best investment ever is when mm -hmm. he bought his uh, McLaren F1 because that car is now... $30 million, Jeez. but he knew because he saw something that other people didn't see. Usually cars aren't gonna ever be the best investment you ever no. make, but, but he had a vision and he's able to follow that vision, right? Now, skewed is you're trying to um, you know, convince your wife you need to buy that car, right? And you're saying that, now you're skewed, it's cloudy because you have an ulterior motive mm -hmm. and you're buying it not because you see something that the world doesn't see or everybody else hasn't seen yet, but you're just trying to convince yourself. We all make mistakes. Entrepreneurs probably make more than any other individuals. Yep. What are the top three or one that comes to mind in terms of mistakes made by entrepreneurs that prevent them from growing revenue? Mm -hmm. What personally have you experienced yeah. you can share? Getting too comfortable. Getting too comfortable. Yeah, getting too comfortable is uh, one of the biggest mistakes that we make because I mean, we work so hard, right? You're trying, you're grinding, you're grinding, you gotta figure it out and then you get comfortable. And so I that's think- That's always a temptation. That, oh yeah, I mean, that's gonna happen, period, you know? The other one is uh, not having guideposts, having goals, having numbers that you're chasing because you're working for yourself essentially, mm -hmm. right? Um, you're never working for yourself, you're working for your, your customers, right? You're working for your employees, so you're never really working for yourself. But you're, you're, you know, that whole idea, you're working for yourself, so you don't have someone to answer to that says, wait a minute, as long as you can pay everybody and you can get paid, then you're okay. But you should have goals that are pushing you forward or mm -hmm. pulling you pulling you really hard to a particular thing. If you don't have those things, you tend to ease up. So one of the big mistakes is not setting hard goals, doing hard reviews to say, how do I get there? And continuing to have a, a sense of urgency around achieving those goals. If you're doing that, you're staying hungry, you're moving fast, you're moving hard, you're making the right decision, you're not adding a lot of fat. And if you do that, I think you'll continue to grow. Standing next to these cars, I'm truly inspired. For somebody that is feeling the same way, I'm sure a lot of you are, uh, but has no money, has that passion to be an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. to, to become a millionaire, where would I start to get on that path? You know, I have no money, I don't have a lot of assets, TJ, <laughs> but I wanna get to where you are. There's no generic answer, right? Cause it depends Absolutely. on who you are, right? Do you have like, are you amazing at sales or marketing? Are you amazing at uh, some technical skill or some gift that you have? For me, I was a coder and I, and I leveraged that into building a consulting company where I could train other people to do what I did, right? So that I built a company. As a younger person, someone getting started, right. one, you have to build a skill. If you can't help people, I mean, the fastest way to become a millionaire is help a lot of people, right? Hmm. So, That's pretty cool. And what's amazing about that, TJ, is it's not age limited, right? You could be a teenager and start a company under your parents' name or something like that if you have that entrepreneurial mindset from young age like you did. Yeah. That's what's pretty inspiring. Yeah. And my daughter, she has it. Yeah. Right? So she yeah. just got her first she just got her first customer. And she's only market. 20 years old. And she's doing social media management. Right? So social media management and the idea for us is how do you get to become a millionaire by 25? So we sit down and we build that plan. And so we decided here's what we're gonna focus on. There's a lot of things to focus on. Mm -hmm. But the important thing is to, to focus on something and start. Mm -hmm. Some people are trying to to figure out, well, I can't get to a million. And that's not how it starts, bro. It starts by getting one customer and then figuring out how to keep that customer and then figuring out how to build a process to keep that customer and then figuring out how to build an engine to do the work, right? Without you having to right. do the work. That's the where the people time. come in. Yeah, yeah. So you have to start there. But some people are trying to start way too big, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how, well, this, wouldn't, this won't make me a million dollars. So they spin their wills, they, they're in a spin cycle. 
Okay. Don't spin your wheels, you guys. <laughs> Listen to TJ. He knows what he's talking about. Yeah. What is your main focus right now, TJ, as an entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's shifts that occurred over the past couple of years. Yeah. Why? How did you come to that decision? Anything yeah. else you want to highlight? Yeah, there's basically three focuses, right? There's me building as the CEO of our weight loss brand. So we, we built that brand to help people lose weight, mm -hmm. and we started building supplements. So it's called a Diva Publishing. Got it. But we have a, a brand, a focus brand health focus brand, liver focus, blood sugar focus, flat belly focus, flat tummy focus, sorry. <laughs> so we have that brand of, uh, of supplements that we sell. With that, I'm helping, I'm, I'm focused on us developing other supplements, partnering with other companies, buying other companies so that we can grow that business. So that's sort of my primary focus. Uh, secondarily though, I coach, right? So I'm yeah. helping people build their businesses. So building my brand and helping coach uh, entrepreneurs at a high level to accelerate their growth. In and any then, kind of industry, right? Assuming, yeah, assuming, I mean, yeah, across industry. Yeah. I mean, being an entrepreneur, there's some fundamental things that are truths yes. that, that, that are always gonna be there. And, and I know how important mentoring has been to me, right? So, and then the last one is as an acquisition op entrepreneur, mm -hmm. buying companies, right? And, Interesting. And yeah, and moving along that way. Let's talk about passive income, mm -hmm. right? I mean, is it real estate? Is it important for entrepreneurs? Obviously, I, I would think it is, but what can you touch on that? I wanna extract. A little bit about that. Because we have companies we can build, services we can offer, products. Mm -hmm. But then what if I, as an entrepreneur, want to create passive income for me yeah. and my family and create that legacy? Yeah. So there's, okay, so one, when people say passive income, they almost think about not doing anything at all, right? Yeah, so it comes to, through the to, mind. To, right, right. So to make passive income. So there's investments, right, like securities. Right. There's some real estate investments or REIT or whatever, right? There's certain things that you can do to invest and you don't do anything, mm -hmm. right? And I have a couple of investments like that, like a huge uh, project in, um, in D.C. where I saw uh, that, yeah. yep, I'm making investment, but I'm not doing anything, right? But I have no control, I'm waiting on money to come, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's cool, but you have to have a lot of money to do that, right? And by the time you get to a point to make that kind of passive investment in terms of real estate, you have a lot of money, you've become pretty sophisticated. But one thing that people don't think about in terms of fairly passive income is uh, buying businesses. Mm -hmm. So you can become an acquisition entrepreneur, buy businesses, you can buy businesses with no money now, all the time. It happens every day, all the time, where you can buy businesses, and that can be fairly passive, right? In Sounds terms really of, interesting. Uh, yeah. Big thanks to Stash for sponsoring this portion of the video. Having the life you envision does not happen overnight. Believe me, I was where you are today, wondering, am I investing my money right? And I stopped worrying when I found Stash. Stash is a personal finance app that makes investing quick, easy, and affordable. For as little as $3 a month, you get access to stocks from brands you know and trust, such as Amazon, Apple, and Tesla. You can invest in every stock available at $5 or less. And as soon as you make your first deposit of $5, you'll get $25 to use at choice in the app. Download Stash right now and you can invest wisely. Stash offers automated investing tools that make it really easy to get started and stick to an investing plan consistently and transparently. It's that simple, you guys. Click the link below if you want to build strong financial habits with a tool that automates your investments on a set schedule of your choice. Big thanks to Stash for sponsoring this portion of the video. What systems and tools do you use, TJ, to manage your finances? So quickly, uh, QuickBooks, use that. Hear right? that all the time. And then I think uh, the, the big one is we have a cash plan that we manage. So basically that's like a projection of what's going out, what's coming in, what's expected, you know, what the cash flow is gonna look like on a month-to-month -month basis, so mm -hmm. I do that. Uh, what software that, is that, by the way? Uh, it's, it's Excel spreadsheet oh, gotcha. to okay. do a budget essentially for, mm -hmm. but it's a, pla it's a cash plan. Where's the money gonna go every month? Is that right. something Where's you created, the Excel spreadsheet, yep. or just bought something? Yeah, it's something I created, used in my previous businesses, I see. and used in my current business to say, hey, where's the money coming in? What's coming in? What's going out? And how are we using this money? So it lets me know um, what buckets to put money in and, and, and how to allocate stuff. Interesting. So it's pretty simple. So just two things, QuickBooks and then Excel spreadsheets that well, you've developed that, over time. Well, I also use a dashboard that tells me every day how many things are selling in, in, in terms of whether it's books, whether it's uh, supplements, whether it's classes, whether it's challenges, whether, whatever it is, right? So that, uh, that's a dashboard that we had someone create. 
let's continue the conversation in the car. Yeah. Take a loop around really Beverly get, Hills. Because it's about the car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I love Ferraris. I mean, yeah. I'd take a Ferrari over yeah. Lambo and even yeah. the sound, yeah. the experience. So yeah. if you don't mind, let's hop into this yeah. beautiful car. Yeah. Continue on. Yeah, let's do it. This car? Yeah, this one. Man, this thing is a beast, TJ. Yeah, 12 cylinders. Oh, this is a 12? Yeah, yeah. Oof. Beautiful. Yeah. Financial setbacks can kill somebody, Yeah. right? As an entrepreneur, I'm sure that's gonna hit you at some point in time. How do you recover? Because some do, others don't. Well, yeah, I think it's a mental mindset. I mean, what's the alternative to not recovering? I like mean, dying, going out of business. Get stuck in that mindset for too long, maybe, and. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's no, I mean, you gotta recover, right? So you have to have the mindset of recover. So it's almost like, what's the option? Like, there's no other option. Rock bottom, for me, I think one of the worst times has been where the economy turned and my customers went out of business. So I had a Is customer that, are we that owed me- 2008 or? Yeah, yeah, customer owed me $780,000. Oh, wow. And went out of business. That's gonna provoke you to figure some things out. You survived in 2008. Yeah, for sure. What two, three things helped you get through it? I think uh, being decisive in terms of making decisions, uh, making some really, really hard decisions, taking a little bit of risk. You know, those are things that help. And, you know, and having great relationships. And being blessed. I mean, you know, right. you know, I've, I've always been blessed. And but those are the things that help me. You know. Mm -hmm. But I think being decisive, also not having uh, an out. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't have like the divorce is not an option. Yeah, Similarly, but, yeah, right? that kind of thing. It's like if it's not an option, it's not an option. It's not negotiable. Yeah, you gotta survive. You just gotta figure out how. Let's touch on leadership approaches. They're different, mm -hmm. they vary. Yeah, yeah. How does that impact financial growth for a firm, for a company? What have you learned in your years? Yeah, it's everything, right? Because the way the CEO goes, the president goes, goes the company, mm -hmm. right? So if the, the president CEO is focused on profit, right? That's what everybody else is gonna be focused on. If they're focused on customer, if they're focused on growth, whatever they're focused on is what the company is gonna be focused on. So it's crucial. What's your leadership style? Uh, depends on uh, where I'm at. Right now, I'm really focused on uh, profit and growth. I'm not a micromanager at all. I like finding people and like release them into the wild, making sure they have the skill set and release them into the wild because I'm not generally a first line manager. Mm -hmm. I have very few people that work for me directly. I like people that I can trust from a leadership standpoint to go off and go do things because I'm really the guy that's gonna go off and do more strategic kinds of things. All right, blitz time with TJ, the millionaire mentor. The rules are quick answers. Quick answers. Thank you guys for submitting your questions. Uh, first one's from Logan. Logan's asking, if you were to start all over again, TJ, what would you do with what you know now? I'd probably start a marketing business today. There's so many people that need help in marketing and building their businesses. That's where I would focus. Brunetta is asking, what is the most expensive car you purchased? Ooh, probably, uh, they're all a couple, the SVJ mm -hmm. or the uh, Superfast, 700-ish thousand, yeah. Okay. Uh, Mike James is asking, what it felt like buying your first supercar? You can elaborate on that. I think I want to hear a little bit more of a longer answer. Amazing, but man. I mean, I, I, I bought um, an Aston Martin. And it was amazing because I looked for a long time, you know, to figure out what I wanted and finally bought this car. You can't even go test drive it, you know. And so I bought this Aston Martin at the time and, uh, and it was pretty special, a hand-built car. All the things that I like about a car, the sound, you know, the quality of the car, the way it looked, the aesthetic, the speed, yeah. The power is pretty amazing. Last question here is from, I think it's, it's, it's spelled Ilian, is asking, what is the easiest hustle you can start with one year and has growth potential? I mean, I don't know, because it's sort of a misnomer, easy business idea. I, it, it sort of has failure written all over it. I agree. Because it's like, oh, I'm looking for an easy way to go out and make money. Ah, okay, I don't know, man. You know, I, I don't That's know. That's the answer. Yeah, I That's don't know. That's the true answer. Thank you guys for submitting your questions. We really, really value and appreciate you. What awesome. about niches that in this environment, especially heading into you know 23 and 24 mm -hmm. with where the economy is globally, 
what would your advice and just from your experience be certain niches that you know like eh, no nah, i probably wouldn't touch that why and why not i mean uh one of the niches that i think suffer during um economic downturn mm -hmm. is you know some of the personal services niches i get my cars washed all the time right yeah. it's like oh wait a minute i don't need to get my car washed every week i can get it washed every two weeks now you know what i mean mm -hmm. maybe i can get it done every three weeks or whatever it is my point is is that certain things it doesn't mean you can't go into those things it just means that you're gonna have to work a little bit harder and and, and understand that this is what's going on but but i don't think just because the market is turning mm -hmm. that you say uh, I'm not going to do that niche. All right. You know, I think you figure out what it is that you do well, what it is that you can offer the market, and then you start, right? Because what happens is that thing will lead you to the next thing. So that it's, not, it's, not, it's not where you always start. Right? Different you thinking you're talking to, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. What are the defining characteristics of a millionaire mindset? One ambition, can do, will do, going to do. It's just a matter of time. I'm mm -hmm. keeping at this thing. There's this resolve and there's this quiet confidence that knows that, hey, I'm on the right track. I'm doing the right thing. I can do the right thing. No matter what happens, you know, I'll get back. I just always say if I bump my head today and forgot everything I knew about technology, you know, I'll still become a millionaire. Are some of those things you're born with versus developed? You know, there are some people that have better judgment than others. Some people have better intuition than others. Uh, some people have better charm and better charisma and stuff than others. But I think a lot of things can be built, right, in mm -hmm. terms of uh, skills to become successful in business. The one thing, great thing about business, right, is that when you think about athletes, think about athletes at the highest level, these guys got to be the best at it. Absolutely. Right? The I'm best at it. They're not, not going to be there. Um, entrepreneurs don't have to be. There's plenty of entrepreneurs, plenty of millionaires that are pretty average. Right, but I'm they're beating it. people. Yeah, there's a lot of people that are beating people by just doing the work, you know? And a lot of times, most entrepreneurs aren't really at the top of their game. There's some that are really, really killing at the top of the game, but a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of people that are making millions are really just above average. So my point is, is that the bar isn't as high as people think to become successful in business. How do you buy a business today without any money down? Because you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Sounds unrealistic. So there's a lot of ways to do it. I'll give you a couple ways. Okay. So you can buy a business and you can do what is uh, leverage financing. And so when people think about leverage buyout or something like that, they think about some aggressive thing where you're coming in and you're pushing somebody around. But to buy it on leverage is you buy an existing business. Let's say there's a... Uh, a company that has mobile detailing businesses all over, right? Mm -hmm. The guy's been doing it forever. He doesn't have a kid. He, don't, he just wants to get out of the business. He's done, right? So let's say he makes a million dollars a year, okay. right? And he wants X amount for that business. He wants $300,000 for that business, $400,000 for half a million, whatever the number is. Mm -hmm. What has to happen to buy that business is that that business has to be able to service the loan that it's going to take to get the $500,000 out or the $300,000 out, right? So if that business can service that, the income, the cash flow can service that, and that guy can figure out how to run that business without the, that entrepreneur, then he can buy the business. And you can get a loan through something called a 7A loan. 7A? 7A. Interesting. I've is a government-backed loan. I've heard of SBA, but yep. I was 7A. It is an SBA loan, but it's a 7A. We'll have to so check it out. you can do that, or you can do seller financing. Right. Where you can say to that guy, hey, look, I'm going to pay you, and I'm going to give you a certain amount, Right, mm -hmm. and that can actually come out of business. But I'm gonna give you a certain amount, and I'm gonna pay you a certain amount on a quarterly basis, monthly basis, until it's all paid off. As a new entrepreneur, TJ, mm -hmm. I would imagine it's hard for me to be involved in some high net worth network groups, right? Where would your advice be to where can I start to at least start building relationships like yourself? And I how mean, important is that for you as an entrepreneur, and ultimately? Yeah, building networks are super important, but I think you have to look at it instead of like this. A broad term, I'm, I'm building this network, mm -hmm. you know, I'm building a relationship with that particular individual, right? So if you look at it that way, I think that's more helpful. So in that way, do it one person at a time and really build a, a relationship with them. Like, and when you're building a relationship with someone, it's like, wait, what do we have in common? How can I add value to your life? 
you know? So now that I know you, I can be like, hey, Paul, you know, this guy man, would be great for your, your, your show. Mm -hmm. You guys are located near each other, blah, 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 right? That's adding value to you, right? right. You know more about me. You'd be like, hey, TJ, man, here's Someone some can... business. Somebody wants to sell their business. Right. Or someone needs help or someone needs mentoring. You might send them over to my way, right? So that's building authentic relationship. So provide by providing real value with people. So where are people gonna find those high value networks? Just in normal places, like go to car meets, right? There's high value it's true. A individual lot of people there. car meets, mm -hmm. right? And so you can vibe on the love of cars. You can vibe on the love of anything, archery, it doesn't matter what it is. Whatever the hobby is, go do that thing. Go be around that thing in an authentic way because people will sniff out you being fake. But the other thing is with the networks though, don't be afraid to ask the question. Don't mm -hmm. be quite afraid to use the network because sometimes people build these relationships but are waiting for the special moment when they can ask the person a question or try to activate their network. Ask people the questions that you need to ask them to move forward. Let's talk about briefly the value and the role coaches play yeah. in your life as an entrepreneur yeah. and those watching. How important are they? What do they contribute to the business in your life overall? Coaches have always been important for me. When I made the transition from being an employee to mm -hmm. an entrepreneur, I called my, my mentor and I told him, I said, hey man, um, I just got fired. He said, hold on a second. And he put me on speakerphone and he said, say it again, I just got fired. And then he said, he just started laughing, <laughs> right? He said, this is awesome. I was like, what? You're you celebrating? Know? Yeah, you celebrating, I just got fired, right? And um, he's laughing, he said, well, this makes you do what you should have done a long time ago. I think another entrepreneur that I got, the first entrepreneur that I paid for, I paid him fifty thousand dollars to be a good chunk of change. Yeah, yeah, to be a mentor for a year, and this was a while ago. And immediately, you know, out of that process of going through that whole program, um, I ten xed that money that I paid him. If I don't have that money, TJ, mm -hmm. um, and I'm watching this interview, and I'm like, man, I I need a mentor. What other ways can you be mentored, quote unquote? Without the $50,000 investment, well, yeah. what other avenues of mentorship can people yeah. find? Yeah, there's obviously YouTube and Instagram mm -hmm. and there's things like that where people give you bits of, you know, nuggets of information. And so that can be helpful. I think uh, Les Brown has been a mentor to me my whole life and I never met him. But sometimes you need specifics, mm -hmm. right? And so you can learn from people being coached and mentored by someone is different. You know, go help someone else in their business. And that was one of the things I did often, was go help people in their business, and they in turn help me. That's amazing. So that's Getting one back. way to do it, but yeah. But usually you can find some sort of mentor or coach that can help you at the level that you're at. And people should not be afraid of investing in that, but people are. Yeah. Earlier in the interview, you mentioned acquisitions as your third pillar that you focus on as an entrepreneur, acquisitions of current companies. So what are some things you look for that really get you excited about possibly acquiring it? And on the flip side, what are some red flags that you say, eh, I'm gonna pause and not do it? Yeah, good entrepreneurs, good people, uh, profit, good systems, and uh, good predictability. Meaning that, hey, the reason why they're making this money, I can see why that's making that money and it's gonna continue to do that. So being able to answer those questions, uh, there's a lot more detail in terms of um, the things that you um, build for acquisition targets that match you or me, for mm -hmm. instance, but uh, that's the sort of down and dirty. Uh, in terms of things that uh, are red flags, are bad people, bad entrepreneurs, and you know it through vibe, know it through energy, mm -hmm. you know it through you know the stuff that they're doing in the business. Is that just something you develop this intuition over time? Yeah, we all have that, mm -hmm. right? Where we go, you know, you can ask your daughters, is this a good person or a bad person? <laughs> That's true. Right? Sometimes you can ask a six-year-old, she'll tell you. Yeah, you can have a pet, you know, and the pet says, you know, somebody comes in the door and the pet goes, Rrr. <laughs> you know, like, hey, look. You know, so sometimes it's that obvious. Yeah. Now, sometimes it's not. You know, I hear a lot of, some business guys say, you gotta be passionate about something in order to achieve this level of success. How true is that? And specifically yeah. for you and your yeah. life, what, what's your advice to people watching us right yeah, now? Yeah, I think passion gets people in trouble all the time. Because Overrated? People, yeah, I think, it's over, I think it's overused and misused, mishandled. So I think you have to be passionate about why you do it, 
passionate about why. Yeah, why you do it, right? Yeah, like let's say you cut hair. Okay. Right? You don't need to be passionate about cutting hair, right? I wasn't passionate about coding. I was passionate about being successful. I was passionate about building a life. Mm -hmm. So that's why I spent the extra hours and the extra time doing it, right? And that was the tool that I needed to, to, to build the business or build a life, right? So I was passionate about why I did it, not the coding. Progress begets passion. So if you start to learn something, you start to get good in something, and people start to say, hey, man, you're doing a great job, right? You're going to build more passion for it, more love for that. it, yeah. right? Man, you're doing a great job. Man, you're just amazing in front of the camera. Wow, cool. Let me do more of that, right? You get no progress, the passion is going to die probably, mm -hmm. right? But the more progress that you get, it's going to beget the passion. So I think people need to just get busy, focused on something. Pick that thing, start doing that thing. That you'll, get, you'll feel the passion around that thing as you start to develop some success in it. Talking about self-made millionaires, mm -hmm. what is one <clears throat> skill or trait that you think you guys share amongst each other that would top the list? I think the thing that we share <laughs> yes. in terms of um, entrepreneurs, um, the, I think the, the, the thing that you'll see is ambition, like real ambition, not fake ambition, right? Real ambition makes you go out and do work, makes you do things, make you move. Sometimes you can be ambitious, yeah, I'm ambitious, and you're just daydreaming, you're thinking about things, you're reading another book, you're reading another book, but real ambition is going to make you get off your butt and go do something. Execute. And that is the thing, because it's really... At the end of the day, as trite as it sounds, it's about how bad you want it. Because mm -hmm. if you do want it bad enough, you'll figure out all that other stuff. But the guys that are the, the, the self-made guys, right? They're self-made because they're self-motivated, they're ambitious, and they're moving forward towards that vision that they have. And so this is about having real ambition. Share with us more information about your success club sprint. And yeah. where did that, you know, where, where did the idea come from? What's yeah. the goal? And mm -hmm. where do you see that five, ten years from here? Yeah, so the Success Cup Sprint is, uh, is my program that is, you know, we run it in a sprint format. So there's four things that people essentially get. And it's four people that are starting a business, have started a business, but trying to grow, aggressively mm -hmm. grow their business. So you get four things. One, you get structure where we're all focused together with a sprint. A specific period of time, time of day, uh, time period for 90 days, focused on growing your business, right? So you got this time where you blocked it off. I'm working on my business as opposed to together in my as business. a group. Together as a group. So we have virtual meetings. Mm -hmm. we're, we're working on things together. You have a portal that kind of takes you through the process, some things that are really important, some tools that you need to, to manage your business, like you ask about some financial tools. Mm -hmm. So here are the tools, a cash plan, you know, these types of things that you need to manage your business, right? So you're putting these things together. You get um, access to me and my coaches that are, you know, amazing people that have all built businesses and done these things. So you get to get unstuck when you're stuck trying to grow your business, you're trying to do things, or you're trying to Google stuff that you can't find the answer to or you need somebody to say hey let's go this way or that way or to help you with your pricing for instance or whatever it is so to work through that stuff and then the last thing you get is you get a playbook that says hey if it was me here's what I would do to build a business today and you see me take a business from scratch and go all the way through with all the things that you build from the offer to the web page to all that stuff and here's all the tools I would use Here's the approach I would use to going out and getting partners and stuff like that. So you get those things in a 90 day sort of sprint. When I charge mm -hmm. for people to come in and do uh, mentoring coaching and I break their business down and I try to figure out the best opportunities for them, that's like a $20,000 six hour thing, right? So a lot of people can't afford that, right? But they can afford working with me in this way and get a whole lot out of it, right? So it's the best bang for their buck, right? In terms of getting value and getting focused on your business, right? That's it. What are the day-to-day -day habits that I should focus on to just develop and continue to develop that millionaire mindset like mm -hmm. anything is possible? Yeah, yeah. I think starting early, you know, getting up. And getting up. Getting, getting at it early. You know, my whole idea is to get, as, get more done by noon than most people do all day. Oh, wow. Right? So uh, that's one. I think uh, building list of things that you're going to get done and committing to getting that thing done that day. Mm -hmm. Helping to inspire other people 
is important because it actually you're preaching to the choir. You're inspiring yourself. You know, mm -hmm. when you're going out, you're like, hey, look, let me, you know, I got a lot of people that I coach and mentor, right? So it's like, hey, I'm coaching and mentoring those people. And in that case, it could be your little brother, your little sister, right? But my point is, is uh, yeah, just, just uh, living a life that would inspire you, right? Like, you know, that. just keep doing that. And also um, having a night routine as well. So having a way to end your day so that you can get off to a really fast, good start. What's the flip side of this, you know, uh, habits that sabotage the success mm -hmm. that we can achieve in our lives? Yeah. Um, not being consistent, not wanting to be consistent. I think you have to have a little bit of faith, mm -hmm. knowing that, hey, I'm doing this thing, it's going to lead me to where I want to go. And I think that's important. But I think some of the things that really, really kill your ability to be successful, and I mean, I don't even know if I can say this on your, on no. your, on your, on your channel, on your heart. but you know, you know, guys out chasing skirt, you know, all the time, guys out drinking too much or, you know, smoking weed and stuff like that, that kind of stuff is going to kill your chances for success. And, and what I mean by that is like, you know, the things in and of themselves is, is not maybe those things, but you can't get up, right? You can't beat the same you that's not doing those things. TJ, what are some of the biggest regrets that you have as an entrepreneur and what you've learned from it? I think the biggest regret as an entrepreneur is that I tried to grow organically, you know, for too long instead of buying a business. You know, if I could do it differently, I would have bought businesses sooner so that I could grow. Because if I did that, I would have created much more opportunity for the people around me. I would have built faster. Yeah, so I think that's my biggest regret. And I think um, one of the things that I would say to your yeah. viewers is that it's, it's never too early to think about selling your business. And it's never too early to think about buying a business. All kinds we're talking about, right? Okay. Not a particular niche that you per se want to have, but anything that has yeah, a great you, opportunity. You think about, well, you want to think about businesses that you understand, mm -hmm. you know, things that you understand because, you know, in doing your due diligence or how you're going to manage this business, how you're going to go forward with it, you want things that you understand. But yeah, there's all types of businesses that you can look at. You know, things from manufacturing to service businesses to to marketing businesses to printing businesses. To a lot everything. of opportunity yeah. out there, right? With business Absolutely. owners that just are done, want to close doors. Like, yeah. Like you were saying that earlier. I mean, it just makes me realize, like, wow, there's so much opportunity out there. Yeah. So and business owners get sick. Business owners get divorced. Business owners change life, stages of life. Business owners get tired. Hmm. Business owners start other businesses. So there's all re types of reasons that business owners would want to sell their business. Business owners want a liquidation event, you know? In conclusion, TJ, uh, thank you so much. It's been a wonderful opportunity to get yeah. to know you, hear from you, and have you share your wealth and knowledge with our viewers. Uh, what do you want to conclude with? Any three pieces of advice, life, business, anything? Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing that I would say is, you know, for most people get started, keep going, right? Keep at it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, millionaire, that number, 10 million, whatever the number is, you know, that number is great. Revisit it mm -hmm. often, you know, but not all the time, right? Focus on building good engines, uh, sales and marketing engine, your delivery Huge. engine, how you do your business, and then your operations and all that sort of stuff. How do you pay your bills and take care of your legal contracts and all those things? Those are your three engines that you have in business, right? So if you focus on those things and you build those things where they're running, and they don't need all of your time, then you're gonna scale, you're gonna have a business that benefits you and benefits the people that work for you, right? And, and you'll grow, you'll get there. But you know, the, the number, you'll get there. Just be consistent, keep right. at it, and focus on you know, uh, acquiring customers. How do you do that? Do that really well. You know, lower the cost of doing that and make sure you're making profit, you know, not just revenue. Awesome. Well, you've showed us today what it's like to get the payoff of true grinding, right? We're here. You guys see the background here. It's gorgeous. Make sure you check out the Millionaire Mentors channel, right? Yeah, yeah. TJ yeah. Millionaire Mentor. And it's been yeah, a pleasure. Man. Yeah, brother. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you, man. Well, that's a wrap, you guys. I hope you really enjoyed this episode and were inspired by TJ, the Millionaire Mentor. We appreciate you watching. Execute on everything we talk about and build successful businesses out there. We greatly appreciate you. Take a second to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so that you don't miss any of our videos we create for you. Thank you so much for watching. Adios.